Stock splits have been all the rage in the market over the past year or two, and one of the reasons is that it lowers the stock price that people are able to buy shares at. Now, that's a psychological benefit. There's no economic benefit of splitting your stock 10 for one, 100 for one, but psychologically there is an impact. But there's also a liquidity impact. Every time you buy or sell a stock, you're likely buying or selling from what's called a market maker. There's somebody on the other side of the trade that needs to be willing to buy shares at a price and sell shares at a price. Now, normally, if you have a 50 or $60 stock, you're gonna have a very, very small spread between that bid and ask is what it's called. Maybe a penny, maybe two pennies. That's because there's a lot of liquidity in those kinds of stocks, especially if there's a lot of trading. And if you're trading round lots or 100 shares per trade, you can make a dollar per trade on just a one cent spread. Multiply that times a few thousand trades a day, and suddenly you're making a lot of money on the stocks that you're trading. That's the way that market makers work. And that's one of the main reasons that companies want to split their stock. A lot of the other reasons are legacy reasons. When I started investing in the 90s, it cost $25 to make a trade, and you had to buy round numbers of shares. If I wanted to buy $100 worth of stock and the stock cost $800 a share, I couldn't do it. It was impossible to make that trade as a retail investor. All of that has changed in the past 10 or 15 years. You can now buy fractional shares. You can make orders with just dollar amounts, depending on your brokerage. A lot of those legacy reasons have changed, but one of the things that has not changed is the liquidity side of stock splits, and that is an advantage for the market, allows for more trading, allows for more efficient trading, and there are four stocks that I think it's time to start splitting your stock. Those stocks are Meta Platforms, Eli Lilly, Costco, and Mercado Libre. So let's go through the argument for each one of those today. My name is Travis William. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content, and thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So let's look at Meta Platforms first. This is the Meta Platform stock information on NASDAQ.com. So this information is the kind of thing that you're gonna find, be able to find on a lot of different websites. Right now it's saying that shares are trading for $504.79, up about 1% today. That's typically what you're gonna see quoted. What they don't often talk about is what is the bid and ask? And what are we actually talking about when we're talking about that price? Are we talking about the bid price? Are we talking about the ask price? Right now, as I'm recording, the bid is $504.79, and there are 600 shares sitting at the bid. That means you can go in and you can say, I would like to sell 600 shares for $504.79, and that transaction will go through. If you went in and you said, I want to sell at exactly the same price, but I want to sell 10,000 shares, this price would move. You would eat up all of the liquidity or all of the buyers at that price, and you would end up moving down in price. So that, that trade may not execute. Now there may be some hidden liquidity here if you did put a bid in, if you did put a transaction in, it may actually execute at this price. But as far as we know, what is visible for the market is that there are 600 shares that you could sell for $504.79. If you wanted to buy shares, you could have to buy at $505 and you could buy up to 130 shares. Now, this changes literally in microseconds. So if I just refresh this page, the stock has, in just less than a minute, the stock has now moved up. And if you wanted to sell shares, you could sell them for $505.02, and there is a bid of 100 shares, or you could buy for 505.49. But again, look at the difference between these two. There is nearly a 50 cent gap between the bid and the ask price. And one of the reasons for that is this is a relatively high price stock. If you wanna put a 100 share bid in, that's gonna be a $50,000 transaction. So if you're a market maker, you put, let's say a $100 bid and a $100 ask. Let's say you put 100 shares at the bid and 100 shares at the ask and you always have that available, that means you're gonna be spending $50,000 per transaction. You're gonna to wanna to be compensated for taking that risk because if a bunch of buyers come into the market, you're gonna be the one selling. If a bunch of sellers come into the market, you are gonna be the one buying. That's the cost of doing liquidity, but you get to make money on that bid and ask spread. What happens if we look at another stock that recently went through a stock split? So this is Chipotle, it trades for about one-tenth the price of Meta Platforms. So if they did a 10 for one stock split, this is around what it would be trading for. And you can see that the bid and ask spread is not 50 cents, 
it's more like 10 cents. So on a percentage basis, it's actually a little bit bigger, but, an ab but on an absolute dollar basis, it is smaller. So if you're buying one share, there's gonna be less difference in the price between the bid and ask for each individual share. So that's what I mean by increasing liquidity. I wanna to get to the next three stocks in just a second. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Let's look at Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly trades for right now $908 per share. And again, if we look at this bid and ask spread, it's a really big spread. About $1.21 right now between the cost of buying shares and the cost of selling shares, depending on what you want to do. And the liquidity is really, really small with this stock, 16 shares and just one on the ask right now. So that makes sense in a way because Meta Platforms is a much more highly traded stock. So you would expect a stock like Eli Lilly to have a little bit less liquidity. But if you did something like a 10 for one stock split, you could potentially increase the liquidity of shares of Eli Lilly, potentially lowering that gap. That would actually be good for the market, potentially even good for the stock because it would bring a number of buyers in who are willing to pay a lower price for the stock. Costco currently trading for $895 per share. Again, really, really big bid and ask spread. Much more liquidity here, four shares on the bid side, 200 shares on the ask side, but look at the difference between the two, nearly $2 between the two. Now, like I said, if you're actually making a transaction and you do a limit order, you may be able to find liquidity between those two prices. You may be able to buy at, let's say, $897.10, but there's gonna be a limit to kind of that hidden liquidity in the market. And this is what's being shown from NASDAQ. So again, another stock that if you did a 10 for one stock split or maybe even a 20 for one stock split, that could potentially drastically increase the liquidity in shares of Costco, again, potentially attracting more buyers to the market. The final one I want to look at is Mercado Libre, a really well-known company, very, very high stock price, over $2,000 per share. And just look at the spread between the bid and ask for Mercado Libre, $2,011.92, $2,035.59. There is $24 difference between where you can buy shares and where you can sell shares on the open market. That is a stock that needs more liquidity. It needs to lower that bid ask spread. They could do a 20 for one, maybe even a 50 for one stock split. And you would get much more activity in the stock. You would lower that bid ask spread. Market maybe makers would maybe let make less money, but they would be happy to do that because instead of having $200,000 with a 100 share round lot, they would have a much, much lower price to provide liquidity to the market for Mercado Libre. So again, stock splits do absolutely nothing to change your ownership stake in a company. It doesn't change the economics of the business at all. The benefits really come down to liquidity and perception. I went through a lot of the liquidity benefits here. You can see that if that bid and ask spread comes down, that is gonna be good for buyers and sellers of stock. People like you and me who are not, who are not market makers in the stock market. The other perception benefits are gonna be a little bit more hidden. People like to buy stocks that are trading for $15 a share because they can buy more shares than if the, a stock is trading for $1,500 per share. No economic difference, it's just a psychological difference. But I think those advantages, the liquidity and the psychological benefits would actually help these four stocks, Meta Platforms, Eli Lilly, Costco, and Mercado Libre. Let me know what you think about those potential stock splits. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.